So I'm out here in the garage studio again, which uh, I actually haven't used in a while because we started parking two cars in the garage. But also I've been uh, back to work on Parkway Broken Dreams. The film's done, the, it's, it's edited. I'm just working on all this stuff around it. I'm still working on film festivals and distribution. And, and now I'm working on bonus features for the DVD, like editing a blooper reel and behind the scenes stuff and deleted scenes. Yes, there are deleted scenes. Kind of weird for a documentary, but also not because the original cut of the film was two hours. The current cut's about 80 minutes. So there's definitely some stuff that was left on the table. I mean, to be honest, there's a ton of stuff that was left on the table. It's a Saturday afternoon. I already had the green screen set up for another project that I'm working on. And I've got a little bit of battery left on the camera. So I, since I have all these lights and all this stuff set up, I kind of figured I'd take a moment to also do a quick video blog because, you know, it, it's kind of weird. California is back open, right? Uh, but not much has changed in my world. I'm still not going indoors places to hang out for the most part and still wearing a mask when I do go indoors places, mainly because I want to be respectful of others, especially when you've got frontline workers who they're all still masked up. I don't know if they're vaccinated or not. I don't know if other patrons are. I mean, you're supposed to be if you're not wearing a mask, but things are happening. So like uh, my Orange County filmmakers group that used to get together, I think like once a month, we haven't met in, you know, 15, 16 months or whatever. And literally right before everything happened last March, we were scheduled in April to shoot a short film. And I think I was gonna do some behind the scenes stuff and that didn't happen. Around the same time, I was uh, meeting with other writers and filmmakers to, you know, work on projects and none of that happened. And it was kind of fortuitous because obviously, a lot happened in my life uh, shortly thereafter. Now things are kind of starting to happen again and we're gonna have our first meeting in a couple weeks. And hopefully there'll be something that comes out of that. I've been writing a lot. I finished one screenplay that I was working on for a long time and got some pretty good coverage on it. And I'm really close to finishing a second one that I've been just not sitting on by me and been like slowly chipping away at that just in the last few months I've been able to like ramp up from being a half done to two thirds done to now being like 80, 90% done. Some of this is also because things are gonna start happening again and things are gonna start filming again. And I wanna get these projects ready. I also kinda wanna get them off my chest and then move on to new things. It's just like Parkway Broken Dreams. Like I'm trying to set up screenings for the fall, but I'm waiting to see how things are looking in the world you know, virus wise and restriction wise. Like I was looking at theaters in Seattle, they're still all closed, or at least they were two weeks ago when I checked. So I can't even book something. And you know, I'm still waiting to hear back from like 20 different film festivals that are happening this fall. They're like all, like most of the notifications are gonna be between now and the end of August. So like there's a lot sort of happening, but it's all sort of in the sort of waiting phase. I don't know why I'm so driven to do this stuff. I don't know why I pivoted from, let's say, doing comics and journalism and whatever else to wanting to do filmmaking. I don't know why. I can't I can't pinpoint it. I mean, it's something I've always been interested in. It's something I've always messed around with since I was a kid. But like, I think it's sort of that perfect fusion of like visual storytelling and the craft and the process of it. Like, I love just the process of it. Like even just setting up everything for today. Every time I've been on a set, even the smallest set, even just one guy with a boom pole and someone with a camera and someone going with a clapboard, it just, you know, it feels like the right place and the right thing. And a lot of times I feel like I'm spinning my wheels on this, especially look, I'm not getting any younger, but the thing is I'm not trying to break into Hollywood. Like I'm just trying to make stuff that I like and that I hope other people will like. Every time I have a day where I'm like, why am I doing this? Then I go and I put together a proposal for a new project and I, you know, I'm like, I don't know if anything's gonna come out of any of this stuff, but you know, I've been revisiting some feedback I got a few years ago. I was shopping some TV pilots and some other projects and I was like, oh, I got good feedback from development people and producers on this stuff and I never really took it and did anything with it. I wasn't like, they were like, oh, this would be really good if you just, did these couple of things. It's like, I would edit the scripts, but then I never kind of went back. I'm trying to be way more proactive about that now and not just let things linger. I've had a lot of friends who've passed away over the last few months for a variety of reasons. I, none of us know how much time we have and not to get like super serious or philosophical about it, but I can't put things off. I can't wait, even though I feel like I'm in good health and you know, I don't feel the age that I am. I know that 
first, other people probably perceive it differently, even though most people don't assume that I'm the age that I am. Depends on how much white in the beard is showing. Also, it's just none of us are guaranteed another day. And that gets reinforced more and more every day. Uh, the last year has really, really driven that home in a number of ways. And I don't want to wait anymore. So I'm going to force myself <laughs> every day to chip away at these scripts and these proposals and these projects and whatever happens, you know, happens. One way or the other, you know, that's that's my legacy. I don't have children. I'm not gonna be passing on my genes. So the only thing I can really pass on is my output. And I didn't used to question it. I used to just make music and make videos and make things. And I wasn't like, oh, why am I doing this? And like, I kind of do sometimes now, but you know, I need to stop doing that. I do it because that's that's what I do. And if, if, I'm def if I have to define myself by what I do instead of who I am, I know that's not the healthiest, but kind of who I am is what I do. And I think that's true for most people. A lot of people identify themselves by their interests and their skills and, you know, like when you when you meet someone who's a writer, they say I'm a writer. Now, there are a lot of other things. There are a brother, sister, mother, father, you know, whatever. But they define themselves by the thing that they do the most or that they most want to do. So I don't really see the problem with it. Of course, my identity keeps changing every couple of years. So a few years ago, I might have been an artist. And a few years before that, I was a writer. And a few years before that, I was an editor. And if now I'm a filmmaker, then maybe next week I'll be back to being a musician. I will definitely be back to being a musician because, you know, that never goes away. But battery's about to die. I gotta go. Love you guys. We'll talk later. Peace out.